this entitled grandma completely lets loose on a teacher because they simply say their grandkid doesn't have to participate in the class if they don't want to. What crazy accusations of bigotry does the grandma make in response? Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. This incident happened a few years ago when I was volunteering part-time as a children's martial arts instructor. Back then, I was maybe 20 or so. It hit me pretty hard because I always had the kids' best interests in mind. But I also understood the grandmother's point of view. Anyway, on to the story. The cast. DK, disabled kid. He was definitely on the spectrum, had some level of mental and physical retardation. And while he was verbal, he would often resort to noises when he was frustrated. E.g. entitled grandma. But like, a low level e.g. Me, yours truly. As I said, I used to volunteer for years as a youth martial arts instructor and coach. I started when I was maybe 15 or so, with supervision. But as time wore on, and our club fell victim to mismanagement and petty politics, I often ended up managing a class of 30 children on my own. Which was pretty stressful, as I had to make sure they were all safe and nobody was doing something they shouldn't. At the time, I worked with two age groups, 5 to 8 year old and 9 to 14 year old. I always loved kids, and while I'd never had any formal training on handling children with disabilities, I very much believed in giving everybody a chance, so at no point was I aversive to trying to include kids with difficulties. One day, E.G. walks in with her grandson. It is obvious from the start the child has some issues. He is very small and scrawny for his age, never looks anybody in the eye, and constantly kind of sways back and forth. E.G. explains to me that his mum had a drug addiction and his dad was an alcoholic and walked out on him. So she's raising the boy. She's upfront about his situation and asks if he can try out with us, which I'm fine with. We get DK a suit. I briefly work with him one-on-one -on -one to get some basic safety rules in. And then we get started. A few weeks in, I realize it's not working. Managing a class of 30 kids on your own is hard. But now I find that 75% of my attention goes to DK. Not because of his disability, but because of his lack of interest. He constantly goes off and does his own thing, ignoring the exercise I've set up. I have to correct him all the time and tell him not to do certain things. I worry because I don't want to make the other kids suffer in any way from my lack of attention for them. E.G. used to sit and watch the lesson which parents are allowed and encouraged to do. But after I told her off for interfering with my class, she's taken to sitting in the cafeteria down the hall, out of sight. I decide to take DK aside and ask him if he likes my class. He says no. I ask him what he'd like to do. He says he wants to play football. So I tell him as gently as possible, he doesn't have to do this sport if he doesn't want to. I certainly am not forcing him. If he'd rather play football, he should go and play football, because he'll be happier doing something he likes. After the lesson, EJ comes to pick DK up and I briefly speak with her. I felt I had tried to be as gentle and correct as possible, explaining that the kid told me he didn't like the class and wanted to play football instead. But I also had to keep it short because the other parents required my attention. A few weeks go by and I don't see DK anymore. I figure he is now happily playing football. I run into EG at the bus stop in front of the hospital where I was studying at the time. I walk up to say hello, but she immediately goes ballistic, yelling at me for excluding her grandchild and discriminating against people with disabilities. I am stunned and try to explain that I never said he wasn't welcome, just that he doesn't seem to be enjoying my class or the sport and that he may be happier playing football but it's no use. She says that his physiotherapist was so elated he was taking my class because his motor skills had improved dramatically. And now that I won't let him participate anymore, he's doing worse. I try again to explain that I never excluded him and that the kid literally told me he'd rather play football. But she just walks off in a huff, gets on the bus, and leaves, never to be seen again. I think it's a very tricky situation with no easy answer. Of course you should make accommodations for those who have disabilities, but if one person is taking up 75% of the attention compared to the other 30 people, it puts the instructor in a really difficult spot. 
how do you make it fair to the other 30 people who are paying to be there? Especially when the kid doesn't even want to be there in the first place. I guess it's just sad when parents or grandparents think that they know best for their kid, but they never actually involve them in the decision making. I, like many people nowadays, am stuck at home most days. I only really get to go out to go grocery shopping, or maybe the pharmacy to get diapers, yay. The other day I had to pick up some diapers, so off to the pharmacy I went. They were limiting the number of people in the store, so I had to get in line right behind Karen. There were about three people in front of us, and we were all keeping our social distance from each other, but I could still hear her complaining the whole time. Uh, why do I have to stand out here? They're going to be out of everything by the time I get in there, etc. When the lady out front tells her she can go in, she goes, Ugh, finally, and storms past her. I'm a regular at the store, so I guess the lady recognized me. So we exchanged, can you believe her? Looks. It was finally my turn, so I thanked the lady and went in. I made a beeline for the diapers section and got the diapers. As I was heading to the registers, I noticed they had some eggs on sale. The pharmacy also had some groceries. I wasn't sure if we needed eggs, so I called my wife to see if we needed some. They had two cartons left and there was a big sign saying, limit one per customer. Both packs looked like they had been through the ringer and were falling apart. My wife said we could use them, especially if they were on sale. I was about to grab one when Karen showed up out of nowhere and pushed past me, like right next to me. I took a quick step back, both out of shock and distancing, and she grabbed both cartons. I pointed out the one carton limit. She said, well my kids need their eggs, and she put both in her cart. I wasn't in a desperate need for them anyways, so I didn't push it any further. I basically followed Karen to the registers, as I guess she was heading there too. They only had two registers open, so I lined up behind her. They had marks on the floor for social distancing. I looked to my left and saw another cooler full of eggs, in much better condition than the two that Karen had taken. So I grabbed one of those and put it in my cart. When Karen got up to the front, she put both egg cartons on the counter. The cashier told her, Sorry, but these have a one carton per customer limit. Karen smiled at her. I know, but I was hoping maybe you could make an exception for me, because my kids eat eggs every day for lunch, and they need their eggs. The cashier looks at the two falling apart cartons, and knows she probably won't find anyone else to buy them. She told me afterwards. So she says, Okay, we'll make an exception for you. Karen is elated. Oh, thank you so much. As the cashier scans and puts the eggs in a bag, Karen puts three packages of toilet paper on the counter. I had glanced at the section as I went past and it was empty. Again, I didn't need any TP, so it wasn't a big deal. The cashier looks at them and sighs. <sighs> Unfortunately, the toilet paper is on a one package per customer as well. Karen looks at her again. Could you make another exception for me, please? We are completely out of toilet paper at home, and this is all you have in the store. We need it. The cashier sighs again. I'm sorry, but if that is all we have, then some other customers might need it. Karen looks at her and says, But my kids need it. I'm sorry, said the cashier. She reached for the toilet paper as Karen pulled it back in a hug. And then she said those six little words that every Reddit writer dreams about. Let me speak to your manager. I was within arm's length of some popcorn, so I debated grabbing some for the show. The cashier grabbed the phone and asked if the manager could come out. He came out after a minute or so. Hi, what seems to be the problem? He asked Karen. Your employee made an exception for me with my eggs, but now she refuses to make one for my toilet paper. He looks at her like she has three eyes, but the cashier explains it all to him. Okay, I see the problem, he says. He steps up at the register as the cashier steps back. He scans one packet of toilet paper, placing all three packs in the baggage area. Karen didn't catch this because she is looking at the cashier all smug. Then he types something on the register and takes one of the egg cartons out of the bag, handing it to the cashier along with the two packs of the toilet paper. Could you please put these back on the shelf for me? 
thanks. Cashier smiles and says, sure. Karen starts to say something as Cashier leaves, but manager cuts her off. Sorry, limit one per customer. She starts to say something again as he puts her TP in the bag with the eggs, but he just turns to her and says, cash or credit. She tries again, but he cuts her off again. Sorry, you didn't say cash or credit. She throws him a death stare, but they have a plastic barrier up and I think she was trying to melt it with her eyes or something, the way she was staring at him. Credit, she finally says, pulling out her card. She pays and grabs her bag. Have a nice day, he says with a smile as she leaves. The manager started to scan my items and the cashier was back by the time I was getting ready to pay. She apologized for Karen. I laughed and told her not to worry about it. This was the first live show I've seen in nearly a month. You know, if we can't go out in the real world for entertainment, at least there are entitled parents to keep things interesting. In the cast is AF Atheist Friend, EM Entitled Mum, CD Cool Dad, OF Other Friend, me, you'll figure it out. The background. This was almost a year ago and I'm just now thinking to put it on here. So obviously I consider myself to be a Christian, although nowhere near blindly devout. In fact, I'm pretty loose with my beliefs. Not trying to preach the word of God as reasoning during arguments. Not flooding my social media. Maybe every once in a while I'll post a verse or wear a cross in public, but more or less not very outspoken. When my friend confessed that he and his family were atheists, I think he was expecting to lose me as a friend. Instead, I just calmly replied, I don't really care, and asked if he wanted to try this new game I got. Not really being a jerk, more like saying it wasn't a big deal. Then we went on with our day and never said anything about it again. The main story, it was AF's 15th birthday, and like most teenage introverts, i.e. me, he just wanted to invite a few of his friends, including other friend, over and hang out, with a plan to pull an all-nighter. My mum made me dress up in a red polo and jeans, which were really comfortable to ride a bike in. I also put my Xbox in a drawstring back to take over, which I put on my chest side because I don't know. My gift was a new game AF had said that he'd been waiting for ever since the trailer. He couldn't afford it at the time, but the star of this story? A silver cross made of two tiny baseball bats. You've probably seen them. Anyway, I get to his house and I'm greeted by CD, who I knew was a Christian. Hey OP, glad you could make it. Nice to see you too, sir. Got nothing better to do, jokingly. AF is downstairs with OF, so if you want to set that up, gesturing to the bag on my chest. Lunch and cake is at one. All right, sounds good. I get my Xbox set up and a few more friends who don't really pose anything further to the story arrive later. We were in a 1v1 tournament on Siege when lunch was called. Everything was going good until I sat down to eat my cheeseburger. While talking about the new season for Siege, EM calls out. EM, mildly horrified. What is that on your shirt? I look down, thinking I got something on it. No, around your neck. I realize she meant my cross. Oh, this? I ordered it online a while back. Pretty cheap too. EM's face becomes mixed with frustration and suspicion, but she says nothing further. The day goes on and we head back down to finish the tournament. This is where it all goes down. I had just hit a nasty on-tap flick on AF and may have gotten a little excited. Who, baby, may the Lord have mercy for I have none. Thumbs up for whoever gets that reference. All of a sudden we hear thundering coming down the steps and EM makes her appearance known by the trademark screeching and pointing at me. Get out! Me, understandably startled. M me? Why? I just heard you say you want your god to kill AF. That's... <laughs> that's not what I said at all. I know what I heard. I want you out of this house in the next minute. Don't touch anything with those filthy Christian hands. I don't want your evil here any longer. I gave you one pass when you walked in with that awful cross. If I had known you were a Christian, I would never have let you near AF. <laughs> Me, incoherent stammering. I was so taken aback, I just left without grabbing anything. OF followed me out the door. WTF was that? I have no freaking clue. There was a pause. Listen, if you want me to ride back home with you, no, I'll be fine. Just startled is all. Do you want me to go back and get the Xbox? Nah, I'll let you guys finish the tournament. Just drop it off when you guys are done. Okay, I'll swing by later. 
OF kept his promise and told me what happened once I left. EM forbade AF from ever seeing me again, even though I was one of the first friends he had in middle school. Everyone was kind of on edge after that, so they all went on a Pokemon Go hunt and didn't get back until dark. And a couple of guys just headed home then and there. Everyone else went straight to sleep. AF and I still hang out under EM's nose and she still has no idea. I find it really ironic when you meet an atheist and they happen to be more religious than a religious person. It seems like it kind of defeats the whole point of what they were trying to do in the first place. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.